This is the Hako FX888. And for those of you who own this, you know it's a really nice soldering iron. And as Dave Jones pointed out, it's kind of difficult to tell when the soldering iron is on. There is this red light that comes on when the soldering iron is coming up to temperature. But it goes off once the soldering iron has reached that temperature. So it's kind of hard to tell when it's on and off. So turning it off may be something you forget to do. So you could go Dave Jones's route and modify the LED so that it's green when it's on and red when it's coming up to temperature. Or you could add a motion sensor. And I'm going to do this externally just so it's easier for everybody to do this modification. And you won't have to worry about damaging your soldering iron. So when it comes to the motion sensor, you can either go with the module or just getting the sensor. This was $15 at Radio Shack. I believe it was made by Parallax. This one I got for $2 at IC Station. Now, it's a little more work to use just the sensor, but I found the advantage was you could make your own amplifier and do all of the sizing yourself. So you could really customize the size and dimension of your amplifier. And if you were to use the module, you're stuck with this dimension that they chose to use. Now here's the pinout for the Hako FX888. Now this will be important for the next clip I'll show you. Now I've added a series of wires between the soldering power supply and the soldering iron. These two are for the thermal element of the soldering iron. This one is for your earth ground connection. And these two determine the temperature of the iron. So if I turn this up, you can see the red light is on. And if I snip one of these wires, that light goes out right away. So, to me that would indicate that you can turn off your thermal controls just by opening the thermal sensor on your soldering iron. So you can accomplish that by using a relay. And I'm sure you could achieve that by using some form of solid state device as well. But I'm just going to use a relay just because that's the easiest component that I can think of to use in order to get a very, very low resistance contact. All right, so let's do that. So I determined that a read relay is pretty suitable for this application. The current and the voltage are very low for the thermal sensor pins. The voltage is 2.9 volts DC and the current is 2.6 milliamps. So the read relay will be adequate for this project. All right, so I'm gonna turn on the power. And normally that red light would be on right now since the soldering iron is not at 350 degrees centigrade. Now if I move my hand over the motion sensor, you can see the red light comes on. And if I keep moving my hand in front of the motion sensor, that red light will stay on, sort of. And the temperature of the iron will eventually get up to where it needs to be. Now the next step will be adding a microcontroller just to acquire a time delay function. So it detects motion, stays on, until say a certain amount of time passes and then it would shut off. So. That's the next step. All right, I've added the final stage of this circuit, which would be the microcontroller. I've programmed a time delay function into it so that when I move my hand over the sensor, it turns on for a time, and then the LED will flash, and then turn off the soldering iron. So I'll demonstrate by moving my hand over the motion sensor. As you can see, the soldering iron is now on, coming up to temperature. And once the LED has finished blinking, the soldering iron turns off. Now something else I implemented into the code was a re-triggerable time delay. So if I move my hand over the motion sensor, and wait until the LED starts to flash. The flashing has ceased and the time delay was reset to its maximum setting. And again, you can see the same thing occurred and the soldering iron is still coming up to temperature. Now it has achieved temperature so that other LED has gone off. 
and you may have been able to hear that click of the relay. Alright, well thanks for watching and my next video will be compiling this into a much smaller enclosure and circuit board. Thanks for watching and I hope this was useful. And some final notes regarding my setup. I intentionally kept the delay short just for the sake of time and if you're curious about what kind of connector I use to connect to the Hako FX888 and the soldering iron connection, I just used some old school Commodore connections. This was from Radio Shack originally. The catalog number is 274-021. Now, I'm not exactly sure what they're called these days. I'll try to find a link and put it underneath the video so you guys can go and find that part yourself. So you'd need a female and a male connection so you could put your inline relay in place there. All right, so thanks for watching again. Take care.